We're way behind where we need to be, folks. The planet is roasting. We're getting record highs every year. I'm sure you watch the news. We have tarmacs melting on uh, airports in England. You have record high heat in India. People are dying all over the place. 30 million climate refugees being created uh, as we speak. Wildfires burning, droughts, no water for agriculture or to drink for people. Um, it's here in the US, it's here in the Midwest. We are lagging behind the rest of the world. China eating our lunch in this area that I'm about to talk about of sustainable transportation. East Coast, West Coast, whatever you think of them, eating our lunch in this area. We like to think how great we are here in the Midwest. We have a long, long way to go, but I'm glad we are here to talk about these things. Uh, I believe the world should be led by the Midwest United States in this area, not these other places I just mentioned. We can get there, but we have a lot of work to do. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what uh, we're trying to do in Madison here. Okay, fleet, uh, fleet, what do fleets do? Uh, we heard from one of my fleet brothers from um, Waukesha. Good to see you here. Um, so we are in charge of vehicles and equipment for every city that you uh, might live in. You have a police force, you have police cars, you have fire trucks, you have garbage trucks, plow trucks in the Midwest. I talked to my friends down south, they don't have to deal with plowing, uh, which is nice for them. Uh, what we're looking at here is a fire truck. It is the first electric fire truck placed into service in North America, made by Pierce Manufacturing in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, we're honored that they gave the prototype to us. We put it into service in May 2021. It's working great. If you hear that LA says they have the first one, uh, they're, they're about a year later than us, and there were headlines about how LA put one into service, and it's not made in the United States either. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about is the green economy, um, it's not just about climate change, it's also about the economy. And we're not doing well in either of these, if you look at the indicators in the news. And again, other countries are going to lead in front of us if we don't do it ourselves here. Uh, so a little bit about me and my team, it's about 40 people, I run three garages, uh, shifts from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., a bunch of mechanics and parts technicians, things like that, uh, some admin people who help me run it. Okay, so we estimated 15% of the carbon dioxide uh, of the city of Madison comes from the fleet, which is mine. Um, yeah, that's 80, 81,000 tons. That's a lot of CO2. It's embarrassing, I hate it. Uh, we're trying to attack it every day. A lot of things we're doing, we've made progress. We're nowhere near where we need to be, but by 2030, I'm hoping we get close to zero. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, we've eliminated probably around 10 million pounds since 2018. None of this stuff existed in 2018. We had no electric cars, we had no biodiesel, or a bunch of other stuff we're doing did not exist. So anyone who hasn't started yet, it's never too late. Never too late to plant a tree. You might have heard that before. There, it's always a good time. Okay, we'll start with our building. Uh, this is the first LEED Gold certified uh, municipal auto garage in North America. It's still the only one, as far as I know. Uh, we have 348 solar panels. We're adding another 500. Uh, we have apprentices working on that right now. Um, so I know we, we heard from um, uh, a union uh, guy earlier. We have uh, several unions working on that for us right now. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, over 800 solar panels. That will be the majority of our power needs. A lot of other stuff too. We have a solar passive heating wall. If you've never heard of that, look it up. It's very cool. In the cold winters, which we have, in the Midwest, it actually helps warm up the garage, which can get cold. We have solar powered EV charging, and we have three kinds of charging. We have employee charging, which I use personally on my personal car. We have fleet charging for our fleet vehicles. We also have uh, public charging, all at this facility. Uh, that helped us get lead gold. We also can fix compressed natural gas vehicles uh, with some special stuff you gotta do for that. And then all every inch of this building is lighted. It's 110,000 square foot. 40 people work there. We mo moved out of these four old dungeon buildings that didn't have natural light that were built in the 1920s or 1950s. We opened this in 2021. We're very proud of it. I love working there. Uh, come visit. You're all welcome to come visit Madison, take a tour. Uh, we're very proud of this building. Uh, we've been talking about apprentices and training the future uh, of our society. We have a bunch of high school kids working with us, learning how to fix electric cars and charging stations and to do uh, all other kinds of mechanical work on traditional vehicles. Uh, real vehicles, they work on ambulances, police cars, garbage trucks, plow trucks, uh, real stuff out in the community. 
Our full-time um, um, employees love mentoring these kids and passing on their knowledge. Uh, it's brought a lot of joy into our workplace. It's good for morale. All of you should be doing this. If you don't have high school kids working with you, do it right now. You can help shape the future of our society. All right, uh, biodiesel. This is not talked about enough, but because we're in the Midwest, I really want to spend some time on this. Electric, sexy, and it's great. We have 85 electric cars, great, whatever. Um, it's, not, it's barely making a dent in the problem. Um, biodiesel is a much bigger deal. So I showed you the 10 million pounds of CO2 we've reduced. 80% of that is biodiesel. So biodiesel is made from things like used cooking oil. Anyone here had uh, cheese curds fried in Wisconsin? All right, I love to see that. We will keep generating waste cooking oil, people. It'll never end. We're never gonna stop frying whatever we can find in the Midwest, right? So we are gonna generate endless supplies of biodiesel feedstocks. Soybean plants will never go away. Our grandchildren's grandchildren will be able to use biodiesel, unlike other things that we're putting into our vehicles that come from far away. Why would we get stuff from far away? All of this stuff comes from Wisconsin. All of the fried cooking oil, all of the waste fat, all of the soybean oil. It's not taking away from food at all. Uh, and it's, those are the feedstocks that go into it. This is where red meets blue politically. Everyone loves this, from the, uh, the right wing to the left wing. I can't think of anything else that we all agree on, but the farming communities of Wisconsin love this stuff. Cities like Madison that are buying it, they love us, we love them, it's great. And all of it is produced, sorry, all of it is actually synthesized into biodiesel from those feedstocks by REG, which has a big plant in Dane County, right in Madison. So we're actually processing all the feedstocks that come from Wisconsin in Wisconsin. So regular diesel, why would we ever buy that? Um, so by 2030, my goal is to convert every, all of our 500 diesel units, putting um, some infrastructure on those. A company called Optimus, where you can run B100, 100% biodiesel all winter, all summer, all year. No brainer, electric's great. We're not gonna be able to convert my 500 diesel units, not including 220 buses, that's 720 diesel units we run. We are not going to be able to convert them to electric, probably in my career. I'm hoping to uh, retire at age 50 in 2030 after getting this stuff done, by the way. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen by then, and here's why. I can only get, let's say, three or four electric trucks a year. Why? Why can't I just get 20 and put them in service? No, uh, I could buy 20 trucks, no problem. Yes, and a lot of them are made in America, like Pierce Manufacturing, right? It's because of infrastructure, people. We're here to talk about infrastructure, right? The infrastructure is not ready for, tw for me to buy 20 electric trucks on my crappy old city buildings built in 1920 with old electrical panels and the, the utility not being quite ready for it and that kind of thing. So. Electric trucks, my very aggressive plan is hopefully we're gonna get three this year, right? I'm gonna get two full-size electric garbage trucks made by Mac, they're great. Side loader, rear loader, awesome. Um, there is a supply chain issue, but that's not the big problem. Charging for this stuff is going to be a big problem. We're not ready for it yet. Again, we're not moving fast enough. I'm trying to get some urgency behind this stuff, but I think by 2035, we're not gonna have converted all our buses and all of our trucks, I'm guessing. Um, so, biodiesel's ready now. Uh, it's made in Wisconsin or Illinois. Illinois is a big biodiesel producer. So is Michigan, so is Nebraska, so is Iowa. I don't care where you're from in the Midwest. Big soybean state. We should be supporting our local economy with things like biodiesel ready now. Everyone who's touching fleet here, convert to biodiesel, do it now. No brainer, and your community will love it. Uh, you can publicize it, everyone loves it. Okay, electric, we are going gangbusters on electric. We have Teslas, we have Leafs, we have Bolts, we have electric buses by Proterra. I mentioned the Pierce Volterra. I heard 50 orders from 50 cities have come in and I'm really proud that we're running the first one. It's put out fires, it saved people's lives. Uh, it has to work. All of this stuff works. I put the mayor in a Bolt on week two of Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway's um, administration in 2019. I met her and I said, hey, can we get you in a Bolt? She's like, sure. Um, you set an example with your executives and yourselves. Um, buy an electric car for yourself and your family. Set an example to your community and to your workplace. Get workplace charging wherever you work. Do it right now. Like, it's already too late. Do it now. 
All right, golf carts, they work great. Electric forklifts, all of our forklifts are electric. They work great. I don't personally operate them, but my people tell me they're great. I drove here in a Maki. Anyone driven a Maki yet? They're pretty sweet. So we got 12 of them for the police department. Uh, we haven't put them in service yet. They came in two days ago. I drove it from Madison to here. Very smooth ride. I didn't stop on the way. I still have 80 miles of charge left. I'm going to charge on the way back. Should be fine. Um, it's easy to get around uh, places like you know, Milwaukee, Chicago, Madison, there's tons of charging. Uh, it's pretty easy. I know that people are working on the rural areas. I hope we get there. I think the Nevi and Webby stuff should help. Um, I think it's too little too late still, but at least something's moving in the right direction. F-150 pickups, we got our first ones. Has anyone tried the F-150 Lightning? It's the future of medium duty. So at the Ford has made the van, uh, the transit van I'm showing you here, and the F-150 Lightning pickup. They're both going to work great. Their torque is better than the gasoline version. The gasoline engine is dying a slow, whimpering death in front of our eyes. It's going to happen no matter what because of supply and demand and market forces. However, all of us should be accelerating. We're moving too slowly. We have to accelerate all this stuff. I don't think my fleet's making a difference in the world on climate change or it's not making a dent. What I'm hoping is that we'll be a model for other cities. That's why we're doing what we do to show you can get rid of carbon dioxide by 2030 and still do policing, still do the mayor's office stuff, still, still do garbage pickup and taking care of fires, that kind of thing. So now we have 80, 85 types of vehicles between these two slides. What I showed you, again, biodiesel, bigger deal, bigger impact. Take that home with you, bigger than electric. And no one's more ag aggressive in the Midwest on electric than we are. All right, there's also hybrid electric. Um, I know my bro from uh, Wisconsin mentioned um, the hybrid electric interceptors. We have, I think, close to 150 of them. They're working great. Something else you might not know of, soybean-based tires. So what else is dirty besides the tailpipe on a vehicle and so many other things? Tires. Tires are made out of all kinds of crap from 20 different countries, endangered species of plants, petroleum, rubber, heavy metals. They're dirty. They, um, they, they turn into dust and go into the air and harm people. Um, a lot of cities, you'll notice our lung problems are worse in places like Chicago and Madison because of asthma rates. Asthma contributes to obesity, mental health, other problems. A lot of that is not just tailpipe emissions. It's also uh, things like soy, uh, tire material going in. So over 1,000 of our to uh, tires are soybean-based. They're much better for the environment. Also supporting the Midwest economy. If you see a trend here, we can do all of this with the local economy producing what we need. Uh, so everyone here should be working on soybean tires. Get them for your own car. Goodyear sells them. You can get them anywhere. Uh, I hope they come out with more. And then we're investigating uh, bio-based fluids for things like engine oil. So um, one of the problems with gasoline vehicles, it's not just the gasoline or the diesel, uh, fossil fuels. It's also engine oils of different kinds, which are dirty. Half my team spends half their day doing oil changes, which is brainless and a stupid waste of time. Um, and electric vehicles don't have oil changes. They don't have parts to change. There's an electric motor and there's a, uh, sorry, there's a uh, battery and electric motor with very few parts. The cost to maintain an electric vehicle of the equivalent kind to gas is less than half. To power up your electric vehicle will cost a third or so. Plus gasoline and diesel, who controls those prices? Criminals around the world, right? Whereas the Wisconsin PSC and in your state, the state or your uh, government will regulate power. So I can predict what power costs in five years. Whatever you say about the grid and how dirty it might be, et cetera, you know what it's gonna cost. When we buy a vehicle, we last, it lasts for 10, 15 years. I can plan out for 10, 15 years what I'm gonna spend on the power. It's a quarter to a third, about a half on maintenance and your mechanics will have time to do other things that are more important than changing oil and they don't enjoy it anyway, trust me. Okay, outreach, this is why I'm here, this is why I'm traveling the country talking about this stuff. Um, we have an expo in April, you're all invited, uh, in Madison, it's free to attend. We're gonna have all these electric trucks I'm talking about and a lot of other stuff, biodiesel people, um, and there's many other things. CNG is something to look at. I mentioned soybean tires, I mentioned bio-based fluids for your vehicle. Think about all the paint and engine oil and transmission fluid and uh, bug juice for your windshield wipers, right? All of that stuff is dirty. 
vehicles are dirty, like inside out, but there's alternatives for all this stuff we're investigating. You should also investigate in order to uh, make your fluids cleaner. And that could be um, bio-based. All right, this is my um, contact info. Email is the best way to reach me. Check out our website. A lot more than this is on there. Um, we're doing a, a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, things I would call experimental. This is why I love city government. We can experiment, try new things, uh, learn from other cities. Other cities will hopefully learn from us as well. Um, I learned most of this in New York City. I was in New York City government for 16 years. That's how I know where kind of the mountain can lead to if we can you know, drag the Midwest along. I hope we do. Uh, and I invite all of you to be a part of it. Um, this is an exciting time. I like to call it the Roaring Twenties for sustainable transportation. We have uh, all this stuff I talked about coming, and we also have a lot of automated functions coming, which will be very exciting, especially for safety. Uh, any questions, feel free to ask, and I welcome all of you to Madison as well. Thank you.